Hey, this is BA. We're going to be continuing our series on price work through the squares, and this one will be on rotating vectors. Let's start with the data. There's really two main issues here. In the actual data itself, if you don't have good data, okay, like if it's free, chances are there's going to be more errors in that. The data providers these days are uh, top notch compared to what they used to be. And even the free is starting to really make some grounds out there, but it's still not there. So if you're not paying for your data, i.e. if you're getting it free from somewhere, be very careful of that. And you'll know right away because your cal some of your calculations won't work. A lot will, but some won't. In a trading environment, you don't want that. Commodities work different than the stocks, you see. Um, commodities have what they call front month. And that's when, like, say, if you've got wheat under observation, you know, it, it goes through the contracts, all right? Or if you've got coffee, it goes through different contracts. Whatever the front month contract is, is what that data shows. You do not want that data. Each commodity contract has its own personality, its own unique environment and its own price fluctuations. Now, for the cycles themselves, they'll work in that front month data pretty much. But the price work will not work in that front month data for what we're doing. Okay, it's very important. Rotating vectors, as you can see, this is from Jensen. Jensen was GAN's assistant, remember. This is from Jensen's book, page 110. And you can see this area here, um, you know, where it's like a, an arc of a circle. That is similar to a rotating vector if you, you know, uh, followed it through. A radius vector. All right, and that of course is that arc that Jensen is showing is the radius of a circle. That's part of why he put that specific element into this because you know he, he's got the inner square in there, all right? But why put that radius vector in there? You know, that arc. Well, that's why he wanted to show it, hey, this is part of a circle. And he talks about that or kind of splices it up in uh, different areas here. Now we can see that up against the square here. And in the square, you can see three primary angles. You see down at the bottom left-hand corner where it says zero, zero, that's called your origin point. Okay, and this, for a high, this could also be inverted where your origin point would be on top. And this would be, you know, changed around. However, what he's doing here is, and now these squares, they're actually constructed for two levels. On the higher level, you've got the two by one, the one by one, and the one by two originating from origin. Those are GAN's three principal angles. We're not gonna get into those. We're interested in the other level, the lower level, if you will, of the price work. So in this square, there's an arc to it. All right, from wherever your origin is, there's an arc just like what's up in uh, Jensen's picture up here, all right? And that arc is the tip of your vector going out. This is what it looks like on a price chart. The red line, as you can see, coming down, that would be your radius vector. The blue lines are the arc as it extends out, upwards and downwards and so on and so forth. Essentially, you need two elements. You need to know the length of your vector, and you need to know the angle it's going to go down or up or whatever. Those are the essential elements. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? That's the question. 